All right, I think that's about our time. So uh, I think it would be a good time to get started with our presentation. So welcome everyone. And uh, thank you for joining us for the second workshop in the career roadmap workshop series that we've been having for transfers. Uh, today is the transfer interview prep workshop. So it's going to be a lot of advice, guidance, and information on how to better prepare for an interview, as well as uh, how to succeed in an interview. So I wanted to share my screen here with the presentation. Hopefully, I'm going to click present. Hopefully, it's coming up for you all. Let me know if there are any issues or if it, it's still on like Google Slides instead of the actual slide. All right. Well, uh, as stated earlier, this is a, the transfer interview prep workshop. Again, it's to uh, better prepare and, uh, you know, work towards succeeding in an interview, whether that be for, uh, you know, a new job that you're applying for, whether you're applying for something like a uh, cabinet position or, or interview necessary position in like, let's say a club or other organization, um, or if it's just for uh, getting involved with something like research or senior design and getting to be involved with one of those teams. So let's go over our agenda for today. So we're going to start off with the main bulk of the presentation, which will be given by our speaker for today, uh, the Director of Career Education from the Division of Career Pathways, Allison Keller. Uh, then I will be going over some of my own personal advice and experiences as the transfer resource specialist and as a transfer student as a whole. Then we will be going over our next step survey, uh, which we've done before. It's to help us know uh, what we should focus on next time for our next workshop. And then we'll leave uh, things open for a Q&A session at the end. All right, so I want to take this time to introduce our speaker, uh, Alison Keller. I don't know if you'd like to say a couple words to introduce yourself. Sure, hi, good to, good to see you all here and um, Happy to be invited to share just some some tips and strategies for the interviewing process, especially um, for transfer students. And I know it's a busy time of your quarter, so um, thanks for joining in. And I'm just going to pull up and share my screen here. Um, okay. And so um, I'm going to, um, you know, share some, some tips and so forth. But if you do have questions as we go along, you're welcome to um, ask, you know, come off mute and ask. We have a small enough crew to do that. Or if you wanted to put something in the chat, if I don't see it right away, um, I can certainly um, address it um, as we move along or at the end as well. They can also um, help to answer questions in the chat if they come up. That's great. That'd be perfect. Yeah. So feel free to use that. So, um, you know, in this session, um, I, I, you know, I'm going to talk about overall interviewing strategies, but I'm especially, I'm going to try to hit on some things that we've learned from this year in terms of the virtual interviews too, because I don't think that's going to be going away, even as we um, reemerge and are able to do more things in person. I think there's been a lot of best practices with interviewing um, that have come, that have come through this year. So I'm going to highlight on, on some of those as well. So let me get started. Um, so when you go through the process of a, of a job search and, and um, they've liked your resume, they liked your applications, that next phase is usually to get you to an interview. Usually you're not offered a job just based on paper. Usually they want to have some interaction with you and, and hear more about your experience and your skills. So um, there's a lot of different ways that employers might do interviews. We um, we do sometimes hear of employers still conducting phone interviews, or they might even call them phone screens, where um, they might ask you some questions um, over the phone. Sometimes they're very brief, um, kind of screen, what we call screening interviews, where they have a few questions to see if they'd want to um, have you participate in a full interview with their team. Um, sometimes, though, phone interviews can be longer. So you can always ask um, how long to expect a phone interview to be if you're invited for one. Um, in, in 
kind of normal times, we'd also see different kinds of in-person interviews, sometimes one-on-one -on -one with an individual, sometimes where you'd be interviewing with many people at one time, what we call a panel. So they might have different representatives from the company um, and sometimes a group interview um, um, to see kind of how you interact with other people as well. Um, obviously this year we saw, we've always seen video interviews, but we've seen an increased amount of video interviews and different kinds of video interviews. Um, and because of the fact that they're so, um, time effective and cost effective, it doesn't involve travel of the interviewer or of you, the candidate. I do think a lot of employers will continue at least first rounds, um, with different kinds kinds of virtual interviews. Um, so we'll talk more about how to how to be successful at video interviews and so forth. Um, we've also seen, um, so video interviews could be live as if you're in person, they're asking you questions. We've also seen video interviews um, that companies are doing where they actually send you a link and at your convenience, you can log in and they have like pre-recorded questions that you record yourself answering. And then those are sent to their hiring team and then they can watch them at their convenience. That's something that um, it existed before the pandemic, but I think it's been utilized a lot more this year um, and the, the idea of it being um, convenient, cost effective, uh, many people can watch um, the interview and so forth. So some of, some of those you may encounter as part of your search. So what can you do in preparation? No matter what kind of interview you have, there's a lot you want to do before um, you get to that interview stage. So so first of all, feel good if you've been offered an interview. That means um, they've seen that you have the requirements or the credentials. They want to talk to you further. So you should go into this feeling confident and good and being able to describe your um your skills and your uh, being able to demonstrate those skills in, in words versus just on paper um, is a good thing. Now you do want, as I just said, you do want to be prepared to talk about your skills and you do want to have um, examples of your um, of your work, of your abilities, um, especially if you read the job description carefully and you see things that they're looking for, be prepared to talk about how you have some of those skills or even if they're kind of transferable skills. Um, and you want to have, as I said, examples, not just saying, I know how to use this technology. You want to be able to share a time you used it to solve a problem or you used it in a project Project. Um, what was the outcome? What was the result? Um, try to research them as much as possible. You want to understand um, the company as a whole. What's their product or service? Even if you're working in a very, you know, distinct unit, it's a good idea to have an overall sense of what's their mission, what are their values, um, and um, kind of um, what um, what their future looks like too. Um, you want to check your own online presence. We do hear from employers that they're checking those things. So before the interview, have a sense of, of, of what's out there um, for yourself that's very public that they could find. For example, if you have your LinkedIn um, address on your resume, there's a good chance your recruiters have looked at that and they could ask you questions um, based on something on there. Um, in, in advance of the interview, one other good thing to do for preparation is think about what you want to learn in the interview. Write down questions because um, usually in a nervous, most of us are, are nervous. So that's something you could do in advance. You could have them ready. If it's virtual, you can put a little post-it behind your, your screen so that um, when you get to that point of being able to ask some questions, you have those uh, handy and on the ready to ask. Um, think about what you're going to wear to your interviews. And of course, you know, that's something we used to always talk about so much in person, you know, you appearing um, professional, appearing, um, you know, clean and so forth. Even on um, video, it's really important to consider um, 
things about like your background, what they're going to see, your lighting, can they see you? Um, I do think it's still important to try to be professional in what you're what you're wearing. Um, we do have a little bit more um, freedom, I guess you could say on, on on virtual. Sometimes you can you can be a little more casual <laughs> on the bottom, but you still want to be pr professional and show that you're really treating this seriously and you really care about this interview. Um, so those are all um, good things to be thinking about. Um, practice, um, you know, looking a little bit at at your camera. If, you know, if you have two screens, you don't want to always be looking over here or looking down at notes. You want to try to be looking at the screen just like you would be as much as you can emulate like making eye contact. Um, if you are going in person or if not, um, you know, if you're going in person, have the directions, et cetera, ready. And if it's on video, have that Zoom link and everything ready and plenty of time to make sure that you are early, that you're probably five to 10 minutes early for that interview. Um, just in case you would get a hiccup or something, you have traffic or something, um, you know, does not go as planned. You want to be prepared for that so that does not throw your interview. And before an interview, you can always practice, and we'll talk more about ways you can practice and questions you can practice, but interviewing is a skill that you can get better at with time. The, the first interview you do is likely not going to be your best interview ever, um, but you because we're nervous and and um, the more you can get comfortable um, with the kinds of questions that they're going to ask if you can get comfortable sharing about yourself in a confident um, yet humble way those those are important things to to practice because we're not used to doing that every day talking about our skills and demonstrating our experiences Okay, so I'm going to dive deeper into a couple of those things. The research element. It's really important that you understand where you're applying. They're going to be able to tell right away how committed you are to this position and this role based on the research you've done. And um, there's a lot of access to information um, by going to their website, but if it's a really small organization or there's not much there, you might want to look at other places, Google the organization, look at vault guides or Glassdoor or LinkedIn. Um, so understanding um, the organization as a whole. Also really study the job description. You really want to um, have an understanding in, uh, of what the job is, but also what they're looking for. What's the criteria? What are the requirements? Because that's a great clue for questions they're gonna ask you during the interview. So that's one of the best pieces for preparation is to look at the job description. And I would be um, thinking about, you know, what is it about this industry or this field that's of interest for you? They'll probably want to, they're probably going to ask you a question about that. Why do you apply to this kind of company? You could do, um, you know, you could be a mechanical engineer in many different industries, many settings, or you could be um, a computer engineer in many different kinds of industries. What is it about ours that appeals to you? And so you, you want to be thoughtful about that and reflect on that before you get into um, into the interview. So that and then usually people do have a genuine you know reason and response. So um, it's to try to tap into that so you can be authentic and that you can be genuine in the actual interview. Okay, so as I said, examples demonstrating skills is going to be what sets you apart and makes you a strong interviewer. So you want to be in advance thinking about examples of projects, um, think about your experiences, think about um, what makes you unique, um, and try when you can to tie it into the requirements of the position or the role itself. And sometimes it's transferable. You may be looking at an organization that's very team oriented and you've worked at, at 
maybe a retail position or as a server um, part time. That was very team oriented as well. And you can tie, even though it might not be, you know, the kind of engineering you're going into, but your communication skills, your working with other people is still very transferable to what you'd be doing as an intern with that specific organization or company. You can connect those dots for them um, in an interview, how you've had experience working with really diverse teams to accomplish goals, to set priorities, things like that. And, um, and that can be very helpful if they hear that you've done that in the past. So this won't be a total novel thing when you're in this organization, um, you, you can demonstrate that you've done that successfully in the past. Okay, so, you know, what are employers looking for? There's a lot of things, a lot of things on this slide, but, um, you know, ideally you want to try to get to the point where you can be yourself and not be so nervous you can't be yourself and or too too many distractions like you wouldn't want the background I have today it's very distracting. Um, but um, and same thing with like a like a choice of attire like the reason why a lot of times people say um, to have kind of muted attire meaning like darker colors or simple patterns is because um, you don't want someone to be so distracted of like what's on what's on the wall behind you or oh gosh you have an interesting tie on you know what is that um because they, then they're not listening to you and you want them to really be listening to you um always arrive early and be prompt but there is such a thing as too early as well so they might give you a link or you might have a time where you're going to a company and usually um somewhere between you know five to 10 minutes to show to show at that door at that at that zoom link is great you can always be there earlier but you might want to hang out in your car a little bit or um you know make sure the zoom link is there and ready to go and hit click um but but just so just so you are there early in case there are any glitches or snafus um to 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 being on time um, it's great to be prepared in terms of having um, like a notebook. Some people use the pad folios, which are kind of these professional binders. You can get like a UCI one, if uh, maybe for a, like a, a special gift or something, or just even a simple like clean folder is fine with place to put a pen and to put um, some paper so you can make some notes or have extra copies of your resume. You always want to be professional and polite to anyone you meet. Um, and I doubt we'll be doing many handshakes, I'll be honest. So um, that's going to be, you know, a little bit awkward <laughs> probably for a little while. It's still on the slide, but um, I don't think many handshakes will be happening. But, um, you know, there, you know, you still want to maintain that rapport with good eye contact and smiling and um, posture being kind of ready um, to engage and just showing that you're enthusiastic um, and confident um, moving forward. So during the interview itself, um, you know, you might have one inter interviewer, you might have a couple of interviewers. And so um, in an ideal world, and some interviewers are really good at making an interview conversational, others not so much. They have their questions and they go through them. But, but don't let it throw you. If an interviewer is more conversational, that's good. You, can, you might be able to connect with them more. It might make you feel more comfortable. So it's okay to be yourself, to be personable. Um, if they tell a joke, it's okay to smile or to chuckle. Um, if it's serious, though, it's okay to be serious. So, you know, again, just try to be yourself. Um, but you do want to show that interest, that enthusiasm. Um, this is you at your best is what's in their mind. So, um, so you have to keep that in mind. As I said before, checking your social media, also making sure you're ready to talk about anything on your resume. Sometimes they'll ask you questions off of it that interests them. Maybe they're just trying to get to know you more. Um, 
kind of talked about why you want the job. Um, you always want to be positive overall. So sometimes they might ask you a question about, you know, tell us about a time you overcame an obstacle or you, um, you know, it might be something about, um, um, something that would be really easy to have a negative example like oh gosh you had a horrible last boss in your job one thing to keep in mind in an interview as much as you can you don't want to speak negatively about like a previous employer or a previous boss because they don't really know your situation enough to know are you just like a difficult employee or do, is it hard for you to work with with authority or with other people so um i said so be just cautious or wary not to to blame others um, when possible. I try to think of examples that aren't all about like, it's never your fault, it was other people's fault um, that something went awry. Um, and um, be okay with silence or pauses in the, in the interview. People need time to process information. Sometimes if you're asked a question, you might need a moment to think of a good example. And that's okay. It feels a little awkward. I know, especially on, on Zoom, I know people want to fill the space or there's always these awkward pauses or silences. But it, that's okay. Let that moment happen if it helps you find a better example. And if you even want to inform them that that's a great question, I want to think about the best example um, to respond to that. If I could just have a moment, think for a moment and then jump in, um, that's okay. It's better to have a better example than to fill the space with fillers of ums, likes, um, and that sort of thing. Um, when possible, try to um, listen to the question. One um, thing you can always do is, is write down questions, especially if it has multiple parts, or ask for a question to be repeated if you didn't hear it all. And when you're responding, you know, so try to answer the question um, fully and be concise when possible. And um, there's a, a, for those of you that like TED Talks, there's a great TED Talk by, um, uh, a woman named Amy Cuddy who does um, some talk about body language and has some kind, sometimes like your body language can just even help how you project and present yourself um, and, and sometimes even like rev up for an interview if you're nervous. Um, so a lot of people find that helpful too. So, okay, I'm going to dive in to some sample and commonly asked questions. So, I would say you can, very, it's very predictable that one of your first questions is going to be one of the first ones in the about you section. It's going to be something such as, well, why don't you tell me a little bit about yourself? Or why are you interested in this position? Or why are you interested in this field? Um, that sort of thing. So I would be ready for those questions. Now, I don't want you to memorize them. I don't want you to have a, a speech written behind your computer that you're reading. But I do want you to think about the main points of how you would answer that question. Have kind of a skeletal outline in your mind about these are the specific reasons of why this position is of interest for me and why I'm a good fit. Or these are you know, reasons why this industry really appeals to me. Um, so I'd be ready for that. That's usually when you're most nervous that you're asked those questions under that about you section. I would also anticipate questions that are like, um, tell me about this experience. Tell me about this, uh, this club membership or this job that you held. Um, kind of like walk you, walking them through your resume or your choices. Why'd you choose to get involved in, in, in this at UCI? Um, They'll also ask you things about like strengths and weaknesses, um, personality kinds of kinds of things too. I want to dive deeper into the tell me about yourself question because that's one of the most commonly que questions I get of how do I answer that one? And so if you're asked this question, just ways to frame it without taking up a half hour to, to talk about yourself is to think about, um, you know, mentioning something usually about like, 
what year you are, maybe your major, your concentration, you know, something, um, something personal is fine. You don't need to go into how many siblings you have, how many pets you have, all that kind of personal information, but keep it um, focused. And then it's good to highlight a little bit about your academics. Um, and especially as they relate maybe to the position you're applying for, that's always good to do. Or if there's something kind of interesting or different that you wanted to mention, you could certainly mention your transfer student if you wish to. Um, and then the professional um, tie it. So tying it together with these career goals or this opportunity. Um, and that should hopefully lead um, into other questions they're going to ask in the interview. So strength and weakness is a very common set of questions that are asked. When you're asked about strengths, I would be um, thinking, because uh, there's a lot of strengths you all have, I'd be thinking about something that would, though, be relevant to the position. So choose something that makes sense for the position and give an example of it. So you want to provide like evidence that you have it. And, and if you can, tie it back to the position or that's why this position is especially appealing for you because you'd be able to use this strength in the, in the job. Weakness. We all have weaknesses. And so when asked about this kind of question, it's good to show you have some self like awareness about where your strengths are and where your weaknesses are. Um, the key to weakness is I would choose something and talk also though about since you are aware of it, um, how you're working to improve upon this weakness. So, um, you know, not just that, you know, for, for some people, it's that public speaking is something that um, is a weakness for them. They're not comfortable with it. So then maybe they talk about how they've gotten involved at UCI in a student organization where um, in the monthly meeting, they always give a an update in, in, a, in a public speaking fashion to the whole group about, um, you know, whatever their area is. So talking about how, how you're working to um, improve it. I will save my, in my personal feedback. Um, I sometimes when I'm doing practice interviews with students, people go on and on and on about their weakness. So be careful. It's so easy. We're used, you know, we fixate on weaknesses. So it's easy to go on and on about what we don't do well because we've thought a lot about it. So be careful to be concise because I because I don't want that to overtake the interview. It shouldn't be any longer than your strengths. That should just be as it should be more important, right? So so just to keep that in mind too. There will also be questions, usually even for like the most technical of positions, there are going to be questions that are behavior based. So questions about tell me about a time when. Tell me about a time when you led a project. Tell me about a time when you solved a problem. Um, and so they're asking for a very specific examples so that you can demonstrate how you used that particular skill or ability. Um, taking initiative. That's one I'm, I'm hearing more and more. Um, you know, utilize attention to detail, things like that. Working on a team. So one way to respond to this, um, you don't have to look at all these nitty gritties, but what I want you to take away from this is if you're asked a question that's behavior based, such as tell me about a time when you demonstrated leadership, they really want a time. They really want an example. So try to think of an example you can share, not just, well, um, you know, I, you know, sometimes people get very vague and evasive and talking about what they, you know, what they do as a leader very generally without giving an example of a time they were a leader. And that's what the question's really asking. So in this example, um, a good strategy is to first give the background of the example, the action that you took, the result, and then tying it back to the position. And so I, I know you can see these details. I'm happy to send um, 
this PowerPoint along um, so that you'll be able to see this later. But it's really using a lot of I statements about like what you did or how you made these decisions, obviously um, what you did as a leader. I think people are really good at giving like the background and that and what you did, but the results and the tying back is a little bit harder sometimes. So, um, so that's where um, you want to be thinking about the examples that in advance of, of what you might like to use, um, whether it's about taking initiative, solving problems, teamwork, things like that that are really commonly asked, and to think about examples that you could share the background, action, results, and tying it back. So at the end of an interview, and sometimes in the middle, they're going to ask you if you have questions. And you always want to have questions, not just questions, I'd say good questions. So think in advance and be curious about what, what is it that you want to know about them. Um, it helps them see that you're really thinking about this seriously. Uh, if they've already kind of addressed everything about the position, the company, you don't have questions about that, you can always ask about them personally. People are flattered to be asked about like what their journey has been at the company or in their position. Um, the only kind of questions I do recommend avoiding at the interview stage are questions about money, benefits, perks, things like that. It's probably not the time to talk about politics and all that kind of good stuff. So keep it very job specific and wait until you have an offer for when you would talk more about about benefits um, in terms of like salary and and vacation time or gym memberships and all that kind of good stuff. In closing an interview, um, a lot of times um, if you if you've been already told the process, great. But if you don't know, one question you could ask them is, um, "What's the next step um, after this interview, or when would you expect to hear more information about the position?" Um, so ask them that if they haven't shared that yet, and it is okay to have. Um, a in closing kind of just a statement or some thoughts if you want to reaffirm your interests and your strengths and kind of summarize that for them and thank them for the opportunity to interview um it can be very impressive when someone closes it when it's genuine like you know it could be a part of that thank you so much um through this interview it's really reinforced my interest in you know working as an intern for xyz for these reasons um, so that's always good to do if if it's genuine, I should say, if it's genuine. If you realize through this interview it's not for you, maybe you want to hold back on that because um, I want you to be authentic. I want you to be genuine. And then always send a thank you. Um, I, you know, I recommend trying to send that thank you as soon as possible, like within 24, even 12 hours after the interview, just so it hits their inbox when you're still fresh in their minds um, is always a good idea. And a lot of people don't do that. I will be very honest. We hear feedback about that all the time, and it's still definitely professional to send a thank you email. Um, if you had many people or like you had a day long of interviews, it is still good to, um, to personalize um, thank yous if possible. Um, there's some words of wisdom from an alum. Um, and it, I, it's amazing. It's such a, it, it feels like a simple gesture, but again, a lot of people, they're, they're like exhausted after the interview and they don't take this extra step and it can make a big difference. So I would do that. Um, I'm not going to go into a lot of detail about this um, right now, but um, before accepting an offer, you just do want to make sure that you're ready to commit fully ethically to a position. A commitment is um, for a position. But I'm going to hop over really quick for that practicing. We have a system where you can practice 24-7 as a UCI student through big interview. Um, and you can record yourself. You can have it ask you questions. You can specify the type of interview um, to ask questions as well. 
And we have other resources. You can always do appointments one-on-one. -on -one. If you have enough time in advance of an interview and might want to meet with a career counselor, we'd be happy to do that with you. So I know I chatted and chatted, but I'm going to um, um, turn it back to you to see. Um, let me stop my share real quick too. Um, what is next? All right. Thank you so much for for that awesome presentation. Uh, I especially really like the part about the thank you uh, note or the thank you email at the end. That I feel like is a really good piece of advice. Um, so yeah, let's move on to the next part of our uh, presentation today. Our workshop. Uh, that'll be the student advice and experience section. So I'm just going to be going over a, oh, let me hit present. There we go. <laughs> um, I'll, I'll be going over a, a, a few pieces of advice uh, that I have I have as a student and as a transfer student, particularly in terms of uh, preparing for and getting involved with interviews, um, especially so not just in terms of job interviews alone, but for things like club positions, like if you're getting involved in a uh, cabinet or in student government or something like that, uh, interviews are definitely a huge thing there as well. Or if you're even uh, as a transfer getting involved in something like research or senior design, uh, those are gonna be really big uh, opportunities that may also require an interview as well, depending on the team. So these are three sort of piece of advice that I have from my personal experiences uh, these alone are not, you know, like, these are the only things you should worry about or care about. Not at all. There's a lot of factors that, of course, go into an interview, as we just discussed more recently. Um, but these are three that I, at least, like, over the years, I personally really wish that people talked to me more about or, or clarified a little bit more um, as I was kind of going through these different uh, processes for getting involved with like, clubs and, and applying for jobs and that kind of stuff. So the first one that I want to talk about is something that was mentioned earlier. Uh, it's confidence or humble confidence, as we like to say, because uh, you don't really want to go too overboard with that. <laughs> um, essentially, showing confidence is something that is pretty important in an interview. I mean, in a lot of situations, it's important, but in an interview especially, it's super, super important, mainly because most of the time when we're applying to a job or a position, we're applying to it because, well, we think we can do it. We're, we think we're a good fit. We think that whatever they got to throw at us, we can handle it. And it's really important to be able to communicate that in a way that is straightforward and humble and not like, you know, super hotshot style kind of deal. Um, and that might be a little bit tough because a lot of the time we tend to be a little hard on ourselves. Sometimes we have self-esteem issues. Sometimes we like to focus on the negatives. We like to see what is bad with us and we want to fix it. But we often tend to forget what is really good in us, our different experiences and skills and abilities that we've developed over time. We should be proud of those things and be able to communicate that we are confident in our experiences and our abilities and how they have prepared us for you know, this position that we're applying for. Now, uh, a piece of information that I really wish a lot of people told me is that you don't really need to be this like overflowing fount of charisma, like a total social butterfly to be able to succeed in an interview. You just need to be able to sort of accept yourself, understand your own abilities and skills, and be able to communicate that to your interviewer uh, in a way that they can, you know, kind of relate to or appreciate, uh, especially so since having a lot of confidence in your abilities, again, the humble confidence, don't go too too far into it because that does not go well with a lot of people. Um, but if you, if you do demonstrate that confidence, it, as with most things, confidence builds trust. And in a position, in, in any position you're going to be applying for, your employers or your fellow coworkers want to be able to trust you. They're trusting you to be able to perform this job and be able to contribute to the team in a meaningful way. So having that level of confidence uh, definitely helps not just, you know, communicate your abilities alone, but it also helps to build trust with your interviewers so they can feel more conf so they can feel more confident in their choice of choosing you for that position. Another uh, really important piece of advice that I have is comfort. Uh, now, when I say that you should be comfortable in an interview, I don't mean that, you know, you should be like, 
ah, yes, I'm going to lean back and kick my my legs up on the table or something like that, or, or be on my phone as I'm doing this. Like, no, that's obviously not very professional. You want to still be very professional, very polite. Uh, you know, you want to demonstrate they have an understanding for the protocols and some of these social rules. But showing that you're comfortable definitely helps a lot. Uh, being able to, the first sort of big reason I found at least uh, as to why being comfortable is really important is because it shows that you're comfortable with the environment that you're in. Um, a lot of times when you're doing an interview, uh, well, nowadays it's mostly virtual, but if you're going to be doing in-person interviews, you know, those could be in, let's say one of the meeting rooms or one of the office rooms at, you know, whatever this company is, or uh, at that like club's room or base of operations, you know, um, or if you're, you know, applying for uh, some kind of research position with like a research professor, it might be their office. Showing a level of comfort you know, that you're not super rigid or stressed or nervous and that you're, you know, really sort of kind of in your zone in a bit, um, that tends to demonstrate to the interviewer that you might actually be very compatible with the environment. Like in a, a literal sense, you're compatible with the area around you. Um, you, you know, it doesn't seem too off-putting for you that this is a place that you probably see yourself being in. Another really important, uh, aspect to being comfortable in an interview is something that a lot of us tend to really forget a lot. And that is that interviewers are also people. They're also people that, you know, aren't just your random everyday Jane and Joe, but they're also people that have gone through the same processes that you have. They've also had to go through interviews and have been incredibly stressed and unsure about whether they're going to be able to really land that position or not. Showing that you're comfortable can help at times, not just put you in a better mood and help you better focus on what's being asked or the discussion, but it can also help make your interviewer comfortable. And if your interviewer is comfortable, then it's going to be just a much better experience for both sides. The last sort of really big piece of advice uh, that I wanted to mention is potential. Um, now, <laughs> A lot of people tend to be like, you know, I have all these experiences. I just need to mention all these experiences. A lot of the times, you know, that's that's critical. People need to know what you've done, what you know, what you can do. Uh, but a lot of people sometimes seem to forget the, uh, the, the potential aspect, as I call it. Um, sort of like your own goals and ambitions, what you want to do or what you think you're able to do in the future, right? Oftentimes, uh, in an interview, people ask you like, oh, you know, um, you were, let's say, part of this club. What do you know about this? Or um, I see you used to have this position in the past or something like that. Mm -hmm. And things like that will, of course, definitely help the interviewer get a better idea of, you know, what you already know. Um, but it's also really important to be able to expand on some of these things because what a lot of times interviewers really care about isn't just that you did a thing. It's what you learned from doing that thing. What new insight or skill that you ended up acquiring from it. Uh, what that specific experience or that class or whatever you ended up going through had to teach you could be very important for the position that, the position that you're applying for. Um, one actually really big example that I wanna bring up later is uh, I was involved in a lot of clubs back when I was in community college. And I didn't really think that, you know, my experience with clubs would come up very often again later on, uh, especially since my own major is like computer science and engineering. So it's like very computer science focused, lots of sit down and do computers, can you do computers right, that kind of thing. Uh, not really much about do you know how to hang out at club, uh, at, a, at a school club and that kind of thing. Uh, but interestingly enough, uh, that experience and that knowledge about, you know, how paperwork and procedures worked, how interacting with other students and faculty uh, sort of went down the protocols and the, the rules behind that, that ended up becoming really important experience uh, and, and, and knowledge and skills that I ended up applying to the current position I'm in right now, the transfer resource specialist. A lot of my job is to, you know, make workshops and reach out to students. And my experience in clubs and in student government that involved reaching out and interacting with students ended up becoming super important and super critical uh, for for my application to this to this position and my role in this position. So, what experiences you have and what knowledge you've acquired 
and what they can teach you and what you can learn from them and how you can apply those things in the future to improve more are really important uh, for interviewers. Just keep in mind that your potential alone is not going to be enough. Um, obviously, you do need some experience uh, that alone, like some kind of like concrete experience, you know, like a certificate or a degree or even just participation in something um, that could help demonstrate things. So uh, potential alone is not good, but potential and experience together make this like beautiful, beautiful, for lack of better term, cocktail of, of, of knowledge and skill and experience that interviewers really, really appreciate. I also wanted to kind of leave this to the end after discussing my three sort of main piece of advice um, is that often having this combination of information and this uh, combining these different lessons that you've learned, um, not just from past positions, but from, you know, hopefully across this workshop, uh, is that a lot of these skills go hand in hand together, right? So as we mentioned earlier, let's say with comfort, uh, you know, being able to be comfortable, you know, in a you know, mature and professional way uh, in, in an interview can demonstrate that you have a level of comfort, not just with the environment, but that you are someone uh, that can maybe exude confidence. And maybe you aren't super stressed all the time. You're someone that has a little more confidence. So it's a little more subtle way of demonstrating your confidence. It also uh, goes a long way, of course, uh, in regards to making the interviewer more amiable, more, more open to interacting with you. Uh, which could make it easier, for example, for you to demonstrate and talk about your experiences and your potential as a candidate or an applicant for whatever position you're going into. A lot of these things go hand in hand. So don't just, you know, lean hard into one side or the other. Uh, try to sort of do a little bit of everything. Everything in moderation kind of tends to work really well when uh, applied in an interview. I also wanted to talk about uh, a little bit in regards to um, research specifically, if any of you are uh, going to be applying for research, this is especially important because I feel out of most things, jobs and research together, those are the ones that tend to be the most demanding style of interviews, since they will ask a lot about your previous knowledge about things uh, as much as your potential. Um, being able to definitely talk about what you know and different ways you can apply what you know and what you've learned is, is very critical. In my own experience, when I was doing uh, an interview with my research professor, my current faculty advisor actually for my research, um, a huge, a huge like deciding factor in that interview was that we were able to talk not just about you know what I knew, but about what my professor was interested in and what they were doing, and how we just kind of went back and forth, uh, sharing ideas um, for different sort of projects and applications of some of the things that I had learned recently and you know they had known the whole time. So definitely being able to balance all these things uh, is, is really important. And especially, I really wanna stress uh, the combination of these three, your confidence, your comfort level, and being able to communicate your potential are really, really important uh, for interviews now coming forward anytime. All right, so we're a little short on time, so uh, and I'm going to be ending things right here. Uh, this is most of the advice that I've had uh, for, for my experiences that I can share right now. Um, right now, I want to move things over to the Next Step survey, which will be helping to uh, let us know what we should focus on next time in the uh, roadmap workshop sort of series, uh, what workshop we should go next and what topics we should tackle and maybe some things we can edit or uh, modify here and there to better suit y'all. Uh, 